Welcome to the UDR cast, live from the Recovery Capital of Canada. We have a couple awesome dudes in the house today, joining us on the UDR Uncover, Discover, Recover. Uh, we talk about everything, you know, in recovery, and um, today a big part of that is going to be mental health, and uh, we have a couple gentlemen who are with Plants for Purpose, Ian Potapoff. And Dale, I always forget last name. Simpson. Simpson. How can I always forget that? How many <laughs> times have I asked you? Twice. Third, Twice. Th- third time Twice here. Twice today. Yeah. <laughs> third time's a charm, right. I'm sure. No, we're so happy to be here. Thank you for having us, Bill. Yeah, dude. So, yeah, say hi. Introduce yourself a little bit, each you, and, uh, and uh, how are you? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Ian, and I am the Executive Director of Plants for a Purpose Canada. We are uh, federally incorporated. Uh, nonprofit um, operating here in Alberta, and we're pretty much a mashup uh, crossover between the planty realm of like plant boutiques and collectible house plants and nonprofit work, um, which is pretty rad in, a, in and of itself. And uh, with all our initiatives going on and the good work we're doing, it might take a, another podcast to get through. 10 4. But today we're here for an initiative we're working on called Courage to Summit. Oh, so we're not talking about plants. Well, I'll probably end up talking about them anyway (laughs) because this is my favorite. But uh, no, here uh, today we're going to talk about men's wellness. Perfect. Men's mental health. And um, I think I'll pass it over to to Dale here to introduce himself. And Dale is kind of the guinea pig in the... uh, In the very first action item of the non-for-profit where you guys are going out and and fundraising for something, right? And this is uh, the Courage to Summit, 21 Mountains in 21 Days, and you are the man. That's it. Awesome. Yeah. No, I, uh, so again, my name's Dale Simpson. (laughs) Just like the show. It's like Bart. Yeah, that's right. Are you a little? Never heard that one before. (laughs) No, my, um. Yeah, so I'm I'm a committee member for the Courage to Summit um, portion of Plants Plants for a Purpose, and, and our initiative is just essentially to raise awareness, raise funds for men's mental health, and and to take an actual actionable step towards you know a solution to to having connection with people, right, and and having guys uh, that may not have an opportunity to connect with people to to bring awareness to. You know, I mean, climbing 21 mountains in 21 days essentially is just the vehicle to try to get attention and try to get, you know, make a symbolic uh, metaphor for, for what it's like living within a mental health issue every every day, getting up and doing that, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, that's essentially what it was and, and that's where it started. And, you know, I, you know, I had talked to you a bit about this in the past and, you know, I don't honestly don't know exactly where what the inspiration for it was, but I think that, um, you know, it's working and, and and uh, it's been an amazing journey so far, right? So we're, we're here just to kind of talk about that and then also uh, more so, you know, what, what's going to come from it because that's essentially what we're doing it for, right? And and that's that's really it. So yeah. so two things. One, to bring awareness to the subject, whether that be addictions, uh, men's mental health, which needs to be exposed more. And then the solution to that, what are you going to do with, with the funding once you get it? And... And how does this like play out in the big picture over time, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's and that's essentially exactly what we're we're here to do. We talked just briefly before getting on here and, and talking about you know what's the difference between mental health or addiction. And for me, essentially, like I was saying, is is they're they're so intertwined. Like you go talk to doctors about it, and the the, the you know the results of addiction can can be misconstrued as an a, as a mental health issue, right? Mm-hmm. Just 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 the fault fo- like <laughs> the fallout and and all that so you know we're more so <clears throat> focused on what the solution to that is and that was connection right whether it be spiritual or with the land like you said and each other you know <clears throat> so many di- so many different um you know connections that were the difference maker for me and and that's really that's really what we're here to talk about right? okay so yeah so just for our listeners and watchers if you're watching we only have the one mic i didn't get a third mic set up so those guys are going to be messing around a little bit with one mic. Um, if you do see Ian screwing up on the podcast, put some comments in the old comment bar, please, <laughs> and I will pass those on to him. 
And uh, so <coughs> let's talk about a little bit like how, how we met. I've known you not as long as Dale, and I haven't even known Dale that long. I've known Dale about a year, about a year, hey? Yep. And then you, I've probably known, I know of you, but I've only known you for mm. maybe six months. Yeah, I feel like, uh, Bill, we've been kind of passing ships mm -hmm. at times, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of were, well, initially we met through recovery, mm -hmm. through the uh, recovery communities here in Calgary. And um, you're right, about a year ago, I think we had our first real conversation and it was great. You're an extremely knowledgeable man. And um, when I hear you talk on addictions or the solutions to it, uh, totally inspiring. Mm. And I'd like to say that right off the bat, that, Thanks. you know, I, I learn a lot just from listening to you. That said, I think maybe I've known of you for years, I think three years plus something like that, mm -hmm. seeing you around, but again, passing ships, but I've always seen you out here doing good work. Mm -hmm. And, um, I appreciate that. How, how has your journey been? I've known of you for approximately three years. Yeah. Didn't really get introduced to you. Um, how's your journey been? Were you lost in it for a while mm. and then, then found a way? Or were you always kind of on your way and this is just the result of being on your way? Or did you, was there an epiphany? like Lost and found. Lost and found, I would say. Uh, so, you know, the, the pandemic... The pandemic mm -hmm. that, you know, I think we all like to forget about sometimes. Um, it was a very hard time for me personally. And uh, my own personal recovery program was not at its best. Mm -hmm. um, I also went through a breakup mm -hmm. uh, with, with my partner at the time whom I was living with. And it was really hard on a guy, mm -hmm. you know, really hard. And not being dialed in... Um, went through a definite relapse. And in that time, you know, on the outside, I managed to hold quite a bit together. Still at a house, still my car, still a job, you know, could talk to my family. But inside, I had reached a, a much lower place than I had experienced in the past. Even when I was on the street, you know, eight, nine years ago, it didn't really compare to how I felt. Because mm -hmm. I spent so long um, rebuilding my emotional capacity to feel. You know, I, I had known what it's like to have a spiritual connection and friends and community and to make those, those amends and clean up the wreckage and go on with life, you know, and have that freedom, mm -hmm. which I, I learned I took for granted. And that's what I'll do. That was demonstrated through my lack of um, sponsorship and all the other things that come with a personal recovery. Mm -hmm. So I guess the journey started in 2007 when I moved to Calgary, 17 years old. I went through a year long treatment center for uh, adolescents, 12 step based. And I had uh, a really great time for four years. Um, again, went through a brief relapse there. Um, and I came back in to recovery. Um, more in a, in a medical treatment way in 2016, 2017, I came back into the rooms and had uh, five years before this relapse. So mm -hmm. in the last 17 years, I've been sober probably 10 or 11 of them, mm -hmm. but not in a row, which I hear is very important. So good learning <laughs> in there, but I definitely could have been easier, right? And this run of sobriety, mm -hmm. you seem super healthy, super connected, super on the path. Would you say you felt that before like that, or is this one different somehow? This one is much different. Okay. We'll get into that. Yeah, it's much different. But I want to say where we connected was you got in touch with me. You brought me a couple plants. And what we happened had to good, those plants, Bill? We had what happened to those plants? <laughs> this was like six, seven months ago. You brought me those plants. and Yes, sir. I was really happy and we had a good chat. Spent about an hour, maybe an hour and a half here and we had a good mm. chat. And then you left and we've stayed in touch ever since, but those plants died. 
I'm terrible at keeping things alive like that. And what did we do today? You brought me a new plant. Round two. Roger, thank you. Round two. And this one should do great. So Roger. I'm excited for you. Okay. And Dale, you and I met uh, in a room. Yeah. Uh, exchanging, exchanging data on recovery. And uh, we hit it off and... And we we actually spent a lot of time getting to know each other, and then then you really got your your footing, and you've been just moving. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, uh, you know, obviously, I mean, I've had in past, I've had long term sobriety in past, right? Like, I mean, I got, I've, I've had, I've dealt with, I've been dealt with depression and anxiety my whole life. I'm mm. convinced with, I've, I've convinced of that, having now being kind of like not cured of it, but relieved to, to some extent through connection and spirituality and, and, you know, just, just having a freedom from addiction. Right. And, and, and so, yeah, I have had multiple, multiple years of sobriety, right. Up to f- almost 15 years. And then, um, you know, having, I don't even know exactly what it was that, that allowed me to, to, to slide back into that, just a, a series of events, series of tragic, you know, stuff and mm-hmm. overwhelming, just, you know, living like, <laughs> some kind of, you know, Greek Atlas type thing where the world's on my shoulders and whatever happened, I don't, I, I can't pinpoint it to one specific thing, but, but I, I relapsed and relapsed very hard, like mm-hmm. extremely hard. Right. And, and to the point where I had to be medically monitored to come off of, of alcohol, you know, and that's a, that's a scary place to be at. And, you know, one, one of the scariest portions of that was just the loneliness that, that one experiences with that, right? Like being at a spot where I'm talking to doctors and counselors, and psychologists, and just anybody that would help thinking, just looking for an answer, right? And, um, and just having, you know, they say pain is the, the currency we covered, <laughs> we used to cover the cost of, of admission, right? Into, into a sober life. And, and, and that's what it was. I just had enough pain and, and it was connection that, that got me back, right? With people in, 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 uh, you know, um, in recovery, same type of thing, right? So, yeah, that's where I met you, and 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 you were huge in helping me at the beginning point. Like there was there was a lot of um, you know some conversations that we had that were that were pivotal for me in, in understanding what I needed to do specifically, what I needed to do, and and the depth that I had to go to it, and and you know being a mentor to me and just being able to to you know talk about some of that stuff was huge for me, right? And mm-hmm. and and I will say like th- it was not easy. <laughs> You know, this was not a this was not an easy road. There was a lot of of a, there was a lot of um, hard times going through it. But but you know that stick to itiveness of it, and and really actually, whether I wanted to or not, or whether I liked it or not, or whether it was it was do or die for me, right? And 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 you know, I'm I'm happy to say today that I have done it. I've gotten to the spot where I am free of of a lot of that stuff, and I am living a life that I love. And and not only that, like. You know, I'm rebuilding relationships with my with my kids, and and I'm able to partake in life. Where, whereas before, it was just you know, life was just happening to me. It just felt like there was mm-hmm. no life. It was just being sentenced to another day of existence. Right? Mm-hmm. And 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 so today, I have lots of choices, right? And um, you know, being at a spot where I, I I actually live a life that I love, and I'm doing something like the Courage to Summit 21 Mountains in 21 days. It 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 actually blows my mind that this is my life today mm. compared to where I was at before when I before I met you, right? And and even at that spot, you know, just being so full of fear at that spot that I met you, and mm-hmm. just willing to do anything, I will do anything mm-hmm. to get to get free of that because I because I am the one what was going to die to this, right? And I and I really believe there are a lot of people out there that are I can see it in their eyes that they're at that spot, right? And so. You know, that's, that's really all I can say about that. You know, being, being alive today, it, it came from connection, it came from connectedness and being able to have somebody talk about themselves in a way that I could understand myself, right, and believe them that mm-hmm. they had been to that spot, right? And I, I, even today, like sitting here, I've listened to your story lots, right, and see you and your daughter here working together on this just is like amazing to me, really, really actually, truly, it warms my heart, it really <laughs> does, because I know the pain. I felt, mm-hmm. I've felt, i I've listened to you talk and, I've, and I know what that pain feels like. Mm-hmm. I have my own. You know, there's stuff, there's, there's things that I went through with my daughter that, and my kids that, that, you know, it's a lot of shame. And I feel like until I accepted a lot of that stuff, I couldn't, I couldn't overcome that shame, mm-hmm. you know, and, and today I'm free of that because I have connections and I, and I have, I've been able to pivot that into a way where, where I can use that to help other people. And that's what this is about. So the same question I asked Ian, you guys have both had decent sober time in the past. 
Um, a lot of times our bad mental health drives us to pick up again or, you know, spiritual malady, however we want to lay this out. Um, how is this run different than the others? And you had significant time before, right? Is it different? Is it the same? Um, maybe what's different if it is different? Yeah, I it, 100%. I feel like it, it is a lot different, right? At the beginning, I... I you know, coming in and having the understanding that I did and, and being having it pre- presented the way that it was in small town. We talked about this mm-hmm. before, right? It just it just was, you know, it's what I needed at the time. I got what I needed at the time. And, and honestly, I feel like me going going back to, to, to addiction and, and, and alcoholism and stuff, it was it was very much so, um, you know, I, I could get upset about it and I could say you know blame it on this or blame it on that blame it on tragedy all this stuff essentially I came out of I, I, I fell back into it because of the lack of connection I mm-hmm. just drifted away from a lot of the people a lot of the things that were helping me before right spirituality was no longer a part of my life I just kind of receded into to loneliness that's honestly what it was and it didn't take long before you know I, I know the reason why I was 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 drinking was because of what it felt like to be sober mm-hmm. and, and that loneliness is what I was running from I was escaping what it felt like to be sober which is a scary thought right because I feel mm-hmm. like a lot like if that like when I actually unpacked that and realized that that's what it was, it was like this epiphany to me that this is not about the drugs and this is not about the alcohol. This is about, you know, a, a lack of connection, mm-hmm. you know, with and, and with so many things, you know, and, and sitting here beside my brother talking about we've had conversations about things that I would have never talked about with with other men before, mm-hmm. you know, and I really feel like I have some deep, dark, serious things that I went through that that a lot of people will never want to share that. That is, be, that is meant to be locked up and buried away. And today I understand that sharing some of these stories with people is the key to their happiness and their freedom from what we're, what's going on because all of a sudden it's okay to be not okay. Mm-hmm. You know, and honestly, if you're not okay with not being okay, you're, you're in trouble. You know, that authenticity and that, that, that genuine, genu- genuine person that you are has to be squared with. Mm-hmm. And that's the that's the substrate from which any sobriety grows. Honestly, it's that that's that honesty, that 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 um, acceptance of of I am what I am, and if I don't say what I am, I'm in trouble, right? Because mm-hmm. I'm living a lie. And mm-hmm. we've talked lots about that. I've shared some of my meditation stuff on, you know, why do I not like myself? Well, I'm not myself. I'm just living a lie, mm-hmm. running around trying to convince everybody I'm okay, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm just slowly dying. Yeah, Roger that. You know, so. So I don't how know if did that answers? But yeah, no, that was that was great, man. Um, so when I met Ian, he was all pumped about starting this non for non for profit, and he was just giving her right early stages, made a couple moves, but the moves that you've made so quickly and solidified the groove of this non for profit, and from where your starting point was to where you are now, now today. Yes, like from what I see, I don't know if this is legit, but mm. you've you've pretty much like taken from a zero starting point to like a a year or two years in a matter of months with your determination and your willingness and your connection and your must have behind the scenes skills because you're moving quick and it and it's you totally. know a credit to you and I want to thank you for doing that and you know showing me a little bit of passion in you gives me a little more passion to push me. And, mm. and, uh, so thank you for that. But how did, how did you and Dale connect to do this first big event? Uh, so essentially we were at side street in, uh, Kensington for the meeting after the meeting, mm-hmm. bunch of friends there it was a great time, but, mm-hmm. Too many people, so it took us, uh, you know, to later on in the evening to actually have a chat. So we were outside, and um, me and Dale had not connected in probably like a month or something. Hadn't really talked to him. He's been out working, and I've been, you know, building this nonprofit. So not a lot of free time. Um, and he just started venting to me about wanting to do this uh, initiative and struggling to find uh, the right partner to work with to then spend the money in the most efficacious way possible. When I heard that story, I immediately thought, 
how the heck am I going to tie plants into mountain climbing? <laughs> you know, it's like, even if this guy was good, you know, you know, people cut their hair for cancer or whatever the, whatever the sacrifice or commitment someone makes for this cause, you know, and they generate this money. Um, how am I going to be relevant to it? Mm -hmm. So I asked Dale to tell me why he wants to do it. And I heard about the mental health. And there were two guys with similar experiences in the symptoms we experienced mm -hmm. and the self-medicating, which led to really devastating addictions. I related to his pain in that story and the futility of trying to go to Western doctors and hospitals, employers for help and nothing. Mm -hmm. I was 13 years old the first time I was hospitalized for like uh, my own mental health. And again, when I was 15 in the BC Children's Hospital in Vancouver, and I was there for six weeks, I ran away actually. I threw some yogurts in a pillowcase and hopped the fence and took off. It was a secure unit. I didn't know that the Sky Train you could just get on without a ticket because I was 15 and not from Vancouver. So I walked the whole thing all day until police found me under a missing persons or whatever. But ultimately, no matter how many medications I got from doctors, no matter how many specialists, specialists my parents hired to, to chat with me, I just got worse. It seemed to compound my issues the more I talked about them. And when I heard Dale's story of what he went through. And it was that night? It was that night. Okay. I, I hadn't seen Dale uh, talk about this. I, he I heard a story around um, recovery, getting through, getting through that, but I had not heard the, the heaviness and the reality of his experience mm -hmm. and the grief he went through, and that resonated with me in a way that, you know, I couldn't say yes fast enough. Mm -hmm. I was just like, yes, absolutely, let's do this. Now, I don't have any background in marketing or promotions, but I watched a lot of YouTube videos. And you can learn to fix anything on there, become anything or any skill these days if you have the right kind of mind for it. So I just began to assimilate whatever data I needed to to do this. Now, I was very fortunate to have, I was very fortunate to have people on the back end uh, friends and colleagues and, you know, I had been working in the nonprofit sector for most of my adult life in one way or, mm. or another. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of friends that I made along the, this journey, my professional career to lean on, to ask favors from and for insight. So when you guys were sitting outside the restaurant talking, going back and forth, and it must have taken some time to have this connection of deep understanding of the depth of pain. Mm. He knew that you were just starting a non for profit correct? He learned that night. Right. And then you listen to his story and you're thinking in your mind, how can I use this in what I'm doing? And then when you hear his story, something clicks and you're like, let's do this. And did you say, I have a non for profit let's do this? Yeah. And that's and, literally what I said. I, 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 I put the offer on the table. Mm -hmm. I didn't quite say, let's do this. Mm -hmm. I said, how could we do this? Mm -hmm. And that led to many more discussions. But the spark of hope and uh, excitement around this idea came on quickly. Mm -hmm. So within a week, I think you're sending me like updates on this idea and how we're going to do it. And we kind of like feed off of and inspire one another back and forth. So mm -hmm. this guy is sending me clips of himself training in the gym through like twice a day and I'm like I better go make more stuff <laughs> right like I I'm, I'm like I, I was I was lucky and fortunate to have a bit of free time lately you know mm -hmm. um I don't have any children I have a chihuahua who you know it's not that needy so well <laughs> depends but not that time consuming right uh I have some frogs but so I have a lot of like time when they you get got home frogs Absolutely. For real. Poisonous ones. He's got frogs? You can't lick them. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, kind of obsessed with the rainforest just a little bit, but ten four. Yeah, they're great. They yeah. don't they don't need much. Very cool to look at though. <laughs> Someone told me like, what does ten year old Ian want in life? Go do that. Go do that. Yeah. And I always wanted to help people. I always loved flowers. Mm-hmm. I'm nature. I grew up in BC in the mountains in the Kootenays. You know, from Nelson, British Columbia. And, uh, you know, I love frogs and I don't even know if 34 year old Ian loves frogs. I don't even know. I think they're cool, but like I could just got a freaking painting, you know, right. but why I have them is for that inner child. I think like a rush, Russian nesting doll, yeah. each chapter of who we've been just goes on top of the next, but down inside of there, there's a kid that I need to find a way to make him happy. Right. And this does it. So a couple of vivariums and a couple of frogs and, and he's good. Okay. So, Dale, what was it? So you guys start this. You're sending them workout videos. He's buying frogs, making <laughs> making shit happen. And uh, what's your perspective on how this kind of came together? And like, it's grown quick. Like, oh yeah. Like you guys are, you're there. How yeah. did it? How do you see it got there? And I see your videos on you guys' Courage to Summit videos, and they're pretty deadly, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I got talking to is exactly, the, 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 like, we got the same story, so at least that's, we got that down, <laughs> right? Um, I honestly, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know where it came from. I, I spent last summer, like, last summer, a huge portion of, of me, uh, you know, when I came out of, um, came out of the, the depths of my stuff, man, there was, I had a lot of pain, you know, and it, and it wasn't going anywhere for me, right? And you know, I had conversation with you about it. I was talking about, you know, taking that and giving it back to Mother Earth. Yeah. You asked me, actually, if I had any idea how we could make this work maybe with what I do. Yeah. And I really didn't. And I'm on, I'm not a not-for-profit. Yeah. And I thought it was a great idea for a not-for-profit. Yeah. And I sent you to somebody, but it didn't work out. And then the universe kind of... Yeah. Yeah, and it, I mean, that's exactly it. I mean, I just had this idea, I spent a lot of time in meditation about it, and it just was never leaving my, my head. And I don't, know, I don't know where it comes from. Like, people ask me, well, we're, why 21? I'm like, well, I work a 7 and 7 shift, and that's how many days off in a row I could get. That's where that came from, right? You know, it was, in, it was essentially, it was meant to, I remember being at a, I remember being at a, uh, an event downtown where, where, where uh, it was a Christmas party got invited to it and and the the cost of admission to the music show was different for everybody what they said was the donation that we require or, or that we're asking for is something that is profound to you that's what it was right and I really I never forgot that because I really really love that because 20 bucks for somebody can be all they have you know and and 20 bucks for a billionaire is like just it, like you probably doesn't even have it like doesn't why would I carry cash like but to me that with that 21 days that's all my days off I can get off in a year, right? Or, or my holidays. So it was like, I want to do something that's profound, you know? Mm-hmm. And so the, the, the whole idea of mountain climbing and being at the, doing that came from, you know, essentially last year, I did a bunch of it. It's not easy. It's a hard thing to do, but there is a massive amount of fee- of spiritual flow that comes towards me from being out there, right? Like Ian's talking about, you know, what do you, what is that 10 year old boy when he wants the, the jungle and frogs and all this stuff? Well, I'm, I'm the same. Like mm-hmm. I go out and I see all kinds of stuff, right? And, and, and I do have a, a, a very profound connection with, with the land and it's right in our backyard. It is literally less than an hour away. Um, so and, what was it like watching him move as quick as you and getting this stuff going? It's kind of scary. Yeah, essentially, like it really, it, it, there was a, there was a reckoning I had to have my, with myself and be like, you just started this and, and, you know, there's a bit of fear that went on, but, you know, I really truly believe that w- where I came from at the, the, the level that I was at, like, I believe truly anything is possible. And, mm-hmm. and, and I, and I really have started grasping this idea of, of, um, what does that look like? Like, what does that look like to you, Dale? Right. What do you want to do? Because I really, truly believe that I've done the hardest thing ever, which has come back from an addiction that, that should should kill me. It kills most people, mm-hmm. you know. And so w- w- what, do, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? And, and you know, this is the beginning parts of it. And maybe it's a little over the top. And I've, th- I've had, you know, discussions with lots of different people. And it's kind of funny to see the reactions of people because some people are just like, yeah, right, yeah, right. 
you know, and other people are excited right away. Some people don't understand what it takes to even do one, let alone, you know, over and over and over and over again. So I know what it, I know what it looks like to do one. I don't know what it looks like to do 21, you know, but it really kind of, you know, started me down this, this path of, you know, what is possible, you know, and, and having different, having, you know, just spending a, a lot of time, um, investigating overcoming boundaries which a lot of them are in our our own head it's fear Mm -hmm. you know like essentially even our bodies the way that our our bodies can heal themselves and 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 meeting people like paul cosman from you know what i mean like it was that blew my mind the confidence i got from just listening to that guy who's that in the beginning i was not nearly as confident about this 21 mountains in 21 days um, as Dale was. So I was like, how are we going to actually prepare this man to, to do this? Right. Cause he's like, yeah, I'm doing it no matter what. I'm like, yeah, how about like, tw- like 12 mountains in 12 days. And he's like, no, no, no. 21 in 21 has to happen. Um, pretty fixated on it. It was important to you. It was an important number that, uh, Dale wanted to hit. So knowing this level of stubbornness, I decided to recruit <laughs> the best help humanly possible. So uh, my first point of contact was uh, Russell Peel. And Russell is the owner of Muteki Strong Academy. And Muteki uh, is just a great gym. They do powerlifting and MMA and tons of really cool stuff. And Russell has always had an interest in guys who are either feeling a little low or young men who maybe have been bullied a bit or gone through it in one way or another. And how do we build their uh, self-sufficiency um, their confidence and, you know, let's like make some CEOs here. Let's make some guys who are going to be very, very confident in whatever they do. Mm-hmm. And I see that there. I, I was in that gym for some time. It was great for me. So I went to Russell and I asked, hey, Russ, like I, I was hoping you'd be interested in contributing to this project. And he was just so awesome. He hopped onto our committee and with his experience of being in pride, fighting in MMA in Japan for like over 10 years, being a national and uh, uh, winning gold medals all over, you know? Like, a guy has so many trophies, it's kind of, kind of ridiculous. World champ, right? And you knew him personally? Yeah, he's a good friend of mine. He was my coach for some time in powerlifting. Um, we brought him into the equation, and he donated a six-month gym membership to Dale and a bunch of one-on-one coaching and uh, one-on-one mastermind for mindset coaching. Um, and... Pretty much every step of the way, he's been super involved in the promotional side of it and just getting um, us up to that next level. If it's Dale uh, physically and physiologically here, or if it's me um, and the marketing and social media side, he's been massive, Mm -hmm. uh, massive, super, super grateful to to Russ. Second, what Dale's referring to here is Dr. Paul Cosman, Mm -hmm. um, who is a naturopath and has a specialty in like anti-inflammation health products and supplements. My really good friend, Joel, Joel Cosman, uh, lives in Victoria on the island, and he has helped me tons and tons with uh, my own health, just using different supplements um, to help with like hormones and balance and um, cognition and memory. I had some stuff lasting from my own addiction and mental health journey, getting off all the meds was a journey but then we're we're, we're repairing that and I feel like there's so many people out there that are pushing some kind of product Mm -hmm. I needed someone I had a personal um relationship with then to trust enough to buy into um their knowledge really so when I went to Joel I said would you like to sponsor this event in some way and he said well you know my dad is far more qualified than I am a lot of what I know came from him so let me get in touch with uh with him and get back to you. And anyway, uh, New World GRC is the company that Paul runs, among a few others. And they donated uh, like a spaceship, a laser beam, like 50 boxes of uh, supplements. We have an unboxing video on our on our Facebook. It's it, it was a wild amount of stuff. There was no spaceship, but everything else was true. <laughs> it was just so much stuff. And um, and we got, we recently did uh, a video conference with him. And recorded that, so I'm hoping to get that edited and um, up on our socials as well pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Um, but just a wealth of knowledge in 
um, how to get endurance athletes to avoid injury to like cartilage and muscle and how to get that promote the body to heal itself mm -hmm. rejuvenation. rejuvenation clinics yeah that's the that's the name of the game so yeah. okay so you guys are doing this and you're getting fully prepared mentally emotionally physically um it's coming up on june the july 3rd july 3rd, 3rd. yeah yeah sorry i knew it was july I thought it was the 6th, but July the 3rd. A fortnight from now. And then 21 mountains in a row in 21 days. And do you stay out on the mountain? on Out, out in Kananaskis or something? No. No, essentially I'm just go going out there every day. That's That's the plan. Just come back to Calgary. It's close enough to Calgary that, you know, there's no reason to need to stay out there right come back and have a shower and you know i got two kids teenagers mm -hmm. right and and essentially it's just an adventure every day different mountain different mm -hmm. you know might be banff might be Kananaskis. i got a list of a bunch of different mountains that i want to climb right and you know i was, I was going to say this earlier too like you know i i feel a huge profound connection to that and and i really think that is an awesome part of life that makes me sad that a lot of people don't get to will never get to experience that mm -hmm. and it is literally just down the highway yeah, yeah. From us, yeah. you know, the most beautiful scenery, like bring you to tears type stuff when you get to the top of one of these places and it's, and it is right down the street from us, you yeah. know, so it's, it's a huge thing and, and, you know, just, just head out every day, do a, do a mountain, come back and lick my wounds. Essentially, that's the plan, right? Get up and do it again the next day. So do you have a team that goes with you at all? It'll just be me heading out, right? Ian and and uh, and Derek essentially are going to be on call. They just give them the location of the starting point every day, and you know I'm outdoorsy enough that I'm confident to go and and do this. I've got my GPS maps and all that stuff. It's, it's really simple. A lot of a lot of people, I I I explain, you know, or they see the stuff and they think it's this over what like, oh man, like that's so epic. It's just, mm -hmm. just download all trails. It's right there. It shows you exactly how to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's really not that difficult, and it was so healing for me to 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 do that, and 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 now, you know, being able to use it as a as a, a mode for for people to 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 gain access to an understanding of mental health or whatever. It's just I, maybe that's what the purpose of it is. I don't I don't I don't know. I really mm -hmm. don't know where it came from. I feel like it just rattled in my head enough times. I talked to you about it before it happened months before, right? Mm -hmm. And. So, you know, that's just, that's really what it is. It's just every day it's symbolic to, to what it's like to wake up and have to, you know, deal with something every day that, re you know, there is no, there's no map for, for a lot of this stuff, right? Yeah, it's just deal with it. So I got to, we'll get back to the podcast in a second. The opinions expressed on this podcast are solely of the guest sharing or myself. We have no affiliation with any 12 step or recovery program. And if you do like our work, please consider visiting billward.life and supporting what we do. Now back to the podcast. I got a big one for you. So for me, very egocentric addict alcoholic, before I burned my life down, I'm going back 10 plus years, um, over extravagant, you know, the egocentric variety, which I really got to keep tabs on, oh, yeah. right? Um, ceremony, my culture helps me keep tabs on it. My sponsor helps me keep tabs on it. So I have the tools in place to keep tabs on these things. Um, you know, I'm a podcaster. I just started a new podcast. I'm on social media doing all sorts of things and my career's taking off and I'm getting well known and I really got to stay grounded with, with humility in, in a, the best way. And I know in the first few years of this journey, I really had to like remember, remember like what my nemesis could be. Oh, yeah. And when self hides itself underneath these good intentions, but am I getting these payoffs and is it stroking my ego and, and just being aware of that stuff? Any, any similar thoughts? And, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I'm acutely aware of the, you know, where I come from as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like this, this idea that, 
you know, I, I just need to run around impressing people. That was a huge portion of, of my, my issue because I really, stru- I, I, you know, my arrogance and, and my need for a center of attention, that is a tool that I use to cover up my critically low self-esteem, mm-hmm. you know, and it got me into a lot of trouble because all I was doing was just running around trying to impress people because, you know, if you really knew who I was, you wouldn't like me. And it worked. I was really good at it, right? And, and being center stage, playing music on big stages, right? And I loved it. And, and that fed my ego, right? It, it really made me feel like, you know, now I'm gathering self-worth out of, out of something that I, of what people think of me, not what I think of myself, right? Or, or what, what, you know, if something happened and this disappeared and I wasn't capable of doing it, I would have collapsed. There's no substance there mm-hmm. underlying, right? It's no inner substance for me. And, and, and it's lonely. That, that, that's a lonely spot, you know? And that's why I, I truly believe a lot of rock stars and a lot of people that you would look at them and be like, oh, that life just looks so great, right? No, it's lonely there, mm-hmm. you know? And it's a lot of fake, right? And there's not a whole lot of substance behind that. And, and so absolutely, you know, talking with, my, with my, my mentors, right? My uncle, my, you know, Kevin, even talking with Ian about it and, and, and a handful of other people. Stefan's a huge portion of my, my understanding and honesty has got to be there with him. And, and, and I've really talked about that because, you know, this did start rolling really quickly. It got a lot of views. It got a lot of hits. It got a lot of, you know, attention right out of the gate. And, and, and that's something that I know is a problem for me. You know, we talk, we've, we've talked about that in past too, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's been things that you've said to me, be like, I don't want to tell you this, but, you know, I just want to, don't want to pump your ego or pump your tires up or whatever. It's a danger zone, you know? Yeah. So yeah, a hundred percent, you know, being at a spot where what's the purpose here? Like we had a conversation before coming here, right? Like, I don't want this to end up being some type of thing that is, you know, awesome videos and, oh, that's awesome. Dale's all, aw- this isn't about that, right? This is about gaining access to, for, for other people who might never have an opportunity to be a part of the mountains or to see what that looks like and that it is easy, right? And not only that, but what, 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 what addiction? Where do we go for that? What does that look like, right? Well, it comes from honesty. This is what mine sounded like. And I'll say it on TV. I'll say it on social media, right? I know that this is the answer to what, what I, you know, honesty is what it is. My story is my story and I'm not ashamed of it. That's where I come from, mm-hmm. right? Without my story, what am I mm-hmm. anymore, you know? And, and, and really being at that spot where that really is the, that is what we're here to do. I really want to, to, to connect with people and, and have an, a place where people can come and connect, whether it's these retreats or we don't even know where the, the, the sky's the limit as far as this, right? And, and, you know, I would be lying if I said there wasn't a personal journey as a part of this, right? 100% there's a selfish aspect of it to can I even do this? right? Getting sponsored by Arcteryx and sponsored by Fjall Raven, right? That could pump you right up. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, it, and, and put and pressure on you. Cool, oh, and it's, cool. it, it is, but it, at the same time, like I really have had a lot of conversations with, with, with other guys and said like, what's the whole point, point of this, right? Is this about, is this a popularity thing? And it's not, you know, I really truly feel from the bottom of my heart that I love helping people mm-hmm. and I help a lot of people. Yeah, you do. You know? And, and you're good at it. Yeah. And, you're also a perfectionist. Yeah. And what if you don't do all 21 mountains? Are you going to be okay with yourself? Oh, yeah. It's going to be what it is. That was a huge conversation. That was that Stefan had that right at the gate, right? And said, like, I'm okay, I 100%. He was one of the ones that supported it. He said, this is awesome, awesome, man. But we had that conversation right quick, right? He snapped his fingers and he's like, I, I honestly, I will support this if you can tell me and look me in the eye and tell me that you're going to be okay if you fall flat third mountain. Right. Because that's a very real possibility. Even some of the injuries and stuff like I, you know, I look at it and it's scary. Right. And, and that's helped me a lot being at the spot where I've had to focus. Right. I'm somebody that, you know, I've always have one foot in tomorrow and one foot in, in yesterday. And I'm regretting the past and fear in the future and all that. And this is this as, as selfish kind of portion of this. I've had to be present and in the moment and watch them where I'm putting my feet because one mm-hmm. wrong step and it's all over. And we didn't even leave the we didn't even leave the port yet. Mm hmm. Right. So, yeah, it's, there, there's a lot to it. And, and, and honestly, it's it's not been an easy adventure to, you know, like we were talking about it today. And I said, we haven't even started this. All we've done is talk about this. We haven't even we haven't even started yet. I haven't done a single thing I said I was going to do other than train for some event in the future. Right. And and I love it because it's a challenge, you mm-hmm. know, and honestly, it's I am out of my comfort zone. I'm getting into it more so through the connections with men that I have, my coach, Russell, right? Like nutrition stuff, talking with, with you know, all of the people that are involved in this, right? Adrian too, right? And, and, and 
Yeah. So being at the spot where I'm uncomfortable with it, honestly, is exciting to me because today I know that, you know, if, I, if all I'm ever doing in my life is stuff that I'm comfortable with, I'm not growing, Bill. Mm-hmm. You know, I need to be uncomfortable. You know, I need to get out there into the darkness or, or to push myself beyond where I'm, you know, my sphere, my <laughs> sphere of comfort, they call it, right? And, and, and now I learn something about myself. What am I capable of, right? Mm-hmm. If I just stayed in the boundaries where I'm safe and I'm okay, like that, I, I die like that. You know, mm-hmm. I need to grow. I have to be outside my comfort zone. I have to be pushing some type of, you know, boundary or, 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 you know, inside my head, because that's where, that's where I learn about myself. That's where I learn about the world, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's a beautiful thing to, to be at a spot where I'm okay to step out and, and put myself out there and say, yeah, you might fall flat on your face. This might just turn in, you know, it's be embarrassing, Mm but I'm okay with that. Roger, Roger. My, my hope was, and Dale's very clear about this is I hope he climbs like 19 mountains. I hope he does something so <laughs> impressive, right? Something that like almost no one else could do, right? So he gets to feel like, yeah, okay, I did it. That's pretty good. But then we got to do a do-over match. Next year, we'll be like, can Dale beat his own personal record of 18 mountains, right? It's going to be your turn I- next. <laughs> uh, we all have our thing, Dale. We all have our thing. You want me to build you a company? No problem. <laughs> he, he admittedly hopes you only get 19. And that's that's not like I'm praying for it, but I just I hope for it. I hope a little bit. But right. I think I think it's gonna be cool. I don't know if this will help your ego or at all, but we did just roll over one million reach, which is like total interactions with our content on Facebook, which is our most popular um social. So that's pretty rad. I think that's uh they say the first million is the hardest to get when it comes to social media. How much did you pay for that? Um, <laughs> we set aside $1,000 for marketing. We put about a hundred dollars into physical marketing through, uh, brochures, mm-hmm. um, which was our initial wave of recruiting sponsorship. And then we have spent the remainder on this with, um, some couple hundred dollars set aside for, uh, leading up to the event. If anyone wants to donate uh, towards that cost, we will happily get videos with 2 million views. Um, but there are some <laughs> strategies you can use around that to get uh, to get views. The algorithm is tricky to work with, but uh, once you have a good understanding and if you're making quality content, then it, it seems to it seems to pop. Roger. Roger. So Dale's climbing. Yes, your, your climb is right now. Because you are the one behind the scenes pushing this, um, Dale's also providing some content. Mm. And uh, where are you at with what do we got? About three weeks. We got two thirteen weeks? days. Thirteen days. Less than two weeks until the first climb. Um, so a PSA has gone out, uh, which is a very brief um, press release to all of the media we could find. We had about two hundred and fifty-eight. Uh, contacts in our list at the end of the day. Hold on. Dale, thank you for keeping that mic right where it needs to be for him. He's so good. Right hand man, man. You got my back any day. <laughs> okay, keep Any going. day. I'm great, at, releases? I'm great at any one task, but don't get me multitasking because I can't talk in <laughs> all this thing in. 10 4. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, so those have all gone out. Um, you know, we're, we're in talks with a few different folks trying to, trying to see where we can land this content. Uh, we are having an invite. On day one, for July third in the morning, eight thirty arrival for anyone in the media. If you have a magazine, um, TV show, online blog, doesn't matter. You're more than welcome to come mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. feature that. We're going to do some ceremony in the in the morning. Uh, Wade will be opening that up. Okay, I'm going back somewhere. Please. The funds that you are raising, you had mentioned a retreat. You had talked about mm. retreats, and sure. so a lot of this money that's going to be raised. You are going to try to do men's retreats over what next spring and summer? When are you doing that? Correct. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, late spring, twenty twenty five. As soon as we can camp outside, uh, we'll be looking to head up. Okay. And uh, Wade is a ceremonialist in the Indigenous culture. He's dedicated his life to serving and helping people. And mm-hmm. you guys have a connection with him, so you've partnered up with uh, Hollow Bone Healing Lodge to some degree to do these retreats with him correct correct and you're going to try to bring in men and just let them uh participate for no cost kind of thing 
that's the ambition. That's the ambition. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So um I, I I found uh um someone who has run many retreats in the past and I asked them just for some numbers. I believe if we hit our targets for this fundraiser, we can absolutely put on two four day retreats next year. There will be an application process through our website to apply and a committee responsible uh, for ensuring the right candidates are picked. If it comes down to however many go to lottery and the rest can maybe go to the next retreat. Mm -hmm. So um, the demographic we are looking for are men who have identified um, some amount of, can identify the problem, just that there is some disconnection there and have, I think priority will be given to folks who either have um, like a family that needs them back now mm. and we, and we want to get them connected immediately. And this will open up to many people once it grows. Mm -hmm. But I think our priority are people who, men who have kids that need them back now, you know, partners that have been carrying the heaviness of that, those symptoms, you know, the pain and mm -hmm. trauma and, you know, substance use um, for too long. You know, we want to grab those guys and give them an opportunity to reconnect. Um, but after this first round in the future, as this expands uh, and grows, I'm hoping that it can open up to many, uh, many folks, you know, yeah. regardless of yeah. um, their current circumstance. But right now you're kind of focused on what you're focused on and get through this and kind of see yeah. see where you go, right? And yeah, we went. Like I think you and I talked about recently, don't make the thing the thing because the thing might change as you're on your way. So mm. never make the thing the thing because the thing is never the thing. Yeah, I was fortunate to talk to uh, an expert and get some perspective. You know, when they're raising money towards cancer treatments or whatever research, they're not really talking about exactly how that money is going to be spent. Mm -hmm. They're just saying, hey, you know, this is a issue that affects many people. Uh, they collect the funds and then they they put it to the best use possible. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really what we did. We we round, we recruited a committee of people who were trustworthy representatives of their own community. So we have Russell Peel, uh, ref, um, representing the MMA and athletes, and then myself uh, dialed in to. Representing you know, working, frogs. Representing frogs. It's fucking wicked. Yeah, yeah, plant world. Uh, no, but really representing, you know, um, unhoused folks. That's mm -hmm. right. really what I've committed my career to is working with people that do not have housing that are, we pass by every day on these streets, right? So that's kind of my my niche mm -hmm. um, and who I speak for or I try to do my best because I've been there. Um, and then Alexander. Alex is uh, uh, a military veteran of the armed forces mm -hmm. and he works a lot with veterans affairs and other organizations helping um, veterans reintegrate when they get home mm -hmm. who are having a tough time doing so um, connecting to them them to the right resources so he's representing uh, men that come from that kind of background um, and Dale Wade, uh, Wade of course um, so we have a uh, we tried to get as many leaders of their own communities as possible mm -hmm. to sit in this uh, at this table to make these decisions. And Wade, I definitely brought in because I I trust his opinion to challenge me mm -hmm. on how some of this money is being used to challenge all of us and to really have a more elder statesman approach to how we're going to make this play out. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I trust him a hundred for that. Did that answer your question? Yeah. I think that answered my question brilliantly. Um, so I want to ask you, Ian. Mm. You and I were chatting not too long ago, and you said, uh, I'd like to come on your podcast. Let's do this. And from what I hear, you're getting a lot of exposure. Mm. There's, you probably could have had any number of different interviews on what you guys are doing. Sure. Um, you're only going to select a few separate type of interviews. You're not going to probably go interview everywhere, but <clears throat> how come you wanted to come on mine, the UDR cast? 
for any, me. Any any like specific reason, or you just decided, yeah. oh, fuck, he's got a good studio. Let's just, let's just get on there." <laughs> Uh, I could joke for sure, um, but, I, but, I, but I won't. Um, I think that personally, you asked me what's been different this last two years. Mm -hmm. And good sponsorship um, has been huge for me personally. But I added in or I found land-based teachings. So it's something that I connected with immensely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm going up to a healing lodge here this Saturday. And it's a big part of my world now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I think that when you've had these experiences to talk to other people who practice land-based teachings and you're indigenous and you follow this indigenous uh, cultural way of living. Mm -hmm. And I respect that and I honor it. And those are the, these are the people I want to talk to mm -hmm. when it comes to like our personal recoveries. I look up to you as um, a leader in our community, you know, and if I could one day speak um, as well as you do about this, I think I could help even a percentile more people. Um, there's an eloquent dialed in, but also casual, relatable guys, guy, you know, way you go about it, which is really palatable to people mm -hmm. and many people. So, I'm I'm honored that you asked me. That's it, I think. I think that's it. I'm honored that you did. Yeah. I was humbled and grateful. And it threw me off because I haven't released one new episode with my new studio mm. on either the Social Impact podcast, of which I've recorded six or seven of now, and I have not released one new UDR recovery episode yet. So by that all happening... You are now the debut episode of the UDR cast. No, girl, baby. Bring it. Bring it. No, I, just, I love it. I just thought that was kind of funny how that all worked out. No, uh, absolutely honored, Bill. And anything, you know, I like the work you do and what you're trying to build uh, throughout your multiple um, endeavors. Endeavors, they'll say. And, uh, you know, I think that when like, you could have easily been on this committee as much as anyone else, right? That these are the type of men, you know, that I see at this table right now that uh, I want to familiarize myself with and support, you know. Um, any views we get, if we can get to you, we're all going to win. That's the type of ecosystem, Plants for a Purpose, was built mm -hmm. uh, to create, you mm -hmm. know. I've seen my friends' companies get contracts and deals due to uh, being involved in this network and being community supporters. Um we were have about just started really recently making some viral content for Plants for a Purpose. Um, I think 2.7 million is our best performing video right now mm -hmm. um, for plays, which is massive. We have about a 8.8 .8 million reach for Plants for a Purpose. Um, that's just on Facebook. So I'm gonna have to get some, some deets from you. I need some reach like that, bro. Yeah, I I definitely. Uh, maybe on the spectrum a little bit, mm -hmm. like slightly, a little bit of a genius. So uh, <laughs> as awkward as I am here looking at your table while you're talking, uh, it pays off in other ways. And I think anything um, with an algorithm, um, give me a bit to figure it out and and we'll get it, we'll get it going. So anytime, Bill. Okay, one thing Absolutely before so. I take the mic away from you and pass it to Dale. Um, this, is, this is mine now. <laughs> plans for purpose. Yes, sir. It's... A non-for-profit that mm. you must love plants and you have a co-founder. What's her name? Rose Warden. Okay. So you two love plants and you will kind of morph into whatever it is that needs mm. service and in purpose for, for betterment of our world? Yeah, that's, that's fair to say. We're open. Uh, we're initiative-based, so we could have an initiative that... Um, goes in any direction, yep. really. Yep. Uh, that's the benefit. We are... Uh, that's cool, dude. We are, are an earning social enterprise. So I have always been a bit of a conservationist by um, just my belief system with plants, right? You get into the plant realm, you go to the bougie boutique, and you see a plant there, and it's $2,600 imported from Thailand. 
because it's like white or something. Right? It has some pretty complex variegation. It's rare, hard to grow. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of money. So my whole life mission in this hobby, in this hobby of collecting plants, has been how do I befriend that person and get a cutting of that thing <laughs> and just have it because I know it's expensive and rare. <laughs> and I have like 78 plants like that in my rare collection that are hard to come by, quite expensive, and um, I did not pay full price for. <laughs> and I think that is the value of knowing other people that have that belief that plants shouldn't be sold for that much. Roger. However, this Christmas, my sister, uh, she just finished her PhD, came down to celebrate with her family, and uh, she brought a new boyfriend. Lovely guy. Love this guy. Scottish dude. His name's Nick. And he said to me, he works a nonprofit out there. We're talking about this, and I have all these racks of plants in, in my home. And he's like, why don't you sell some of those? This is when I came to see you, Bill, to grab those socks. Mm-hmm. There was a call for help from Sisica, and the, I wanted to get some things together for an outreach team. And all I could get was this bag of socks. So I'm like, I'm going to go on Amazon, and I'm going to have to spend some of my own paycheck to get some stuff to give this nurse, who I really respect, mm-hmm. um, items for this team. And Bill's socks. But uh, <laughs> for, as donations, right? And uh, it was almost a light bulb moment, and the grow light almost like turned on, and a different setting came on behind me, and the light went. It was my light moment, and I thought... I'm just going to have to sell these, you know. Nick was in town, and I was just talking to him. The light went, and he was saying, when someone like you, Ian, makes a bunch of money off something, just more good happens. He'll sell some of these things, propagate them, and sell them for the money, and you will be able to do more of these initiatives. You'll be able to fund more good in this world. Bad mm-hmm. things don't happen when people like you get money. And that... Anymore. Well, historically, <laughs> they just got very high, but... <laughs> But times have changed, yeah. The party um, these days looks a lot different. Roger. Yeah, pizza parties, okay. pot- repotting parties. We do party still, but it looks a little different. Anyway, that's where the social enterprise model comes from. Okay. Plants for a Purpose donates 25% of its total revenue uh, right off the top into its name beneficiary, who right now is Parachutes for Pets. Uh, we're wrapping up our second quarter with them before our board of directors um, Alex, the ne- next uh, Alex chooses the next uh, charity that will receive funds from us, and every quarter it goes to vote, and it can change, mm-hmm. and that allows us to redirect and aim this um, money we generate That's cool. to whoever needs it most. That's amazing, bro. Okay, bro. Um, that's awesome. I really love what Plants for Purposes. I thought it was very. Uh, when you first told me about it, I thought you were gonna be kind of stalemated into one direction only based on plans for purpose but it actually today it made sense that you have many areas you can go to because you're initiative based and and uh it's kind of a brilliant thing that you're doing so so awesome i've I've never seen it done quite like this i try and have like switzerland energy you know golden retriever energy i want to be able to walk into any nonprofit or charity or, or organization in town mm-hmm. and be able to be friends with them, be allies, mm-hmm. you know, even if we have our own um, unique direction we're going, um, you know, no one's seen a golden retriever walk up and been like, this dog sucks. You know, everyone's like, that's a good dog. That's an all right dog. I mean, cat people like them, you know? So I, I want golden retriever vibes, I think, uh, overall. And plants for a purpose, if you're non-competitive, if you're generating revenue and then spend, sending around town, so far it seems like everyone's your friend. Mm-hmm. So I like that. Okay. okay. I like that. So we're going to wrap her up here pretty quick, but I want to go to Dale for the finish off here. And uh, when I when I think of you, Dale, and I think how hard I've seen you work at changing, and I know when we put good into the world and we seek this help. God knows where we're broken. Creator knows where we're broken. And and he brings the connections of the people and of the land and of the things that you need to heal, he's going to bring to you. And it's going to work in various ways. And as we're talking about mental health and addictions today, and I know you help a lot of men and, uh, and a huge part of your passion is connection to the land. And ever since I've known you, you've been climbing mountains and doing stuff like that, right? Um, what do you see 
in the people that you help or that you work with or that you interact with that like opens your heart and why you would want to do something like this would be my first question. I think that to some degree I'm an empath maybe. Mm. I can feel other people's pain and I've called you in tears a couple of times mm-hmm. over some things that I've, people have shared with me. I feel like for some reason people find it really easy to talk to me about things. Maybe it's because I'm open to talk about my deep darkness or something, but I, I really truly feel like I know that, you know, there's a lot of pain out there for people, right? And and it really is difficult to even accept or talk about and just having that connection with, with somebody else and, and, and being open to, to, to hear somebody or just hold space with them or whatever or, or have it be okay, like I was talking, like, I don't, I don't know exactly how this is all kind of kind of goes, but I do I, or how it's going to go. But I do know that you know, like, ask if you're asking me why do I want to help people or what like why why this way? You know, the the answer is that just because it can. You know, it really really truly feel like I don't understand how, but I know that ever since it started going, there's not been one roadblock in our way that's fumbled it up, right? I really truly feel like I've just thrown to this and it just started snowballing and going in this direction and i have this faith that whatever is meant to come from this absolutely will come you mm-hmm. know and to, to face it fearlessly and and you know having having people in my life that i that, that rely on me to to listen or to help or to, to to be that portion of them at just for a little period until they're capable of carrying carrying what i've taught them or what i've shown them the same way that you know i do that i take stuff that you've taught me and pass it along and that's and that's the true answer to this right and so I really feel like a lot of what's going on with with Courage to Summit and, and even just with everybody at this table, like they're, they're, I, it brings comfort to me to feel like by doing what we're doing or doing what I have been doing in my life and the stuff that's been taught to me that I, I can potentially be some form of the answer to somebody's prayers today. Mm-hmm. Like I can partake in this, right? And it, and it comes from giving back. I, I really truly feel like having this connection-based approach to you know mental health or addiction or coming you know like just loneliness in general is really an avenue that that really is close to my heart and means a lot and i and you know and i'd be it'd be easy to sit here and 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 cut a bunch of different stuff that doesn't work down right and i've done that but you know i really feel like having this time and having you know being a part of this and some sort of connection based approach to Mm -hmm. addiction and all this stuff is very critical because i feel like it works Right. And, and especially for men, right? Like there's oh. so many men that have not learned how to open up, how to share, how to express themselves and they bottle it up and like, and men's group are fairly few and far between. And, and so for men, especially. Oh yeah. hundred percent. And, you know, and just the, the, the stigma of just like some of the stuff that people have shared with me, it, you can tell I am mm-hmm. the first person that has heard this and they are, they are, it, it's beyond them that they're even sharing it. Right. But, mm-hmm. but watching them go through it and being okay and not having it be thrown back in their face or having me, you know, they, they're okay with it because I tell them some of my deep, dark stuff mm-hmm. and I do, right. I'm not ashamed of the stuff that I've been through. It's my, it is my reality. And the more you talk about that deep, dark stuff, less power it has over you. hundred percent. hundred percent. And it, teaching them not to. Yeah. Right. And now yeah. we're at this, we're, now we're at this spot, we're, we're at this spot where the recovery, uh, the, like the recovery system is, is feeding itself because the ones that are getting recovered are starting to give back and start mm-hmm. helping and doing this stuff. And it's easy to, to look at other 12 step stuff and say, well, that's the whole, that's the whole modality of that. Okay. Well, that's fine. But there's certain parts of that we're not allowed to talk about outside of the room Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because of tradition or because of whatever. And that's fine. Right. I don't have to cut it down. I don't have to cut down the government and looking at, you know, (laughs) all the the stuff that seems to not be working there. Right. There, it's, it'd be easy. It's like drowning kittens. Like why? (laughs) Like really, you know, or looking at uh, like where the government spends money and all these things. Right. Like I'm, It's, it's really easy, right? It really is. And, 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 you know, it's, it's difficult, but I really truly feel like, you know, there, that there is value in saying that we need to try something different, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and believing in this is something that's so easy to do because I watch it work every day. 
Okay. I really do. And the last thing is, is we talked a lot about you connecting on the land, you connecting with the mountain, oh, yeah. you connecting probably with the sunrise and the sunset on some of these, you know, days where you're you're seeing the sunset from the top of the world and, you know, the animals, the bears, the the trees smelling the, like that connection too, right? Yeah. And what does that mean to you? Oh man, it's like I just... Like the last last mountain I climbed, I was just, it's so easy for me to get locked in my head, even on some of these climbs, because I'm in pain, I'm hurting, I'm, you know, trying to keep my heart rate in zone three, because that's the best like spot I can work out. And, and I really feel like getting out and being a part of the land, like going and finding some of the waterfalls that I've seen, some of the, so the animals, like I'm stumbling through and I'm looking at the ground, I look up and there's five, six bighorn sheep within, from here to the mirror away, and they, they didn't move when I rolled up, it wasn't until I noticed and kind of, you know, started backing away and then they're, they're running up, you know, escape terrain type thing. But, mm-hmm. you know, seeing animals like that, seeing the, the, the scenery, being a part of the forest and just being quiet, like some of the amphitheater type sections of, of some of these, some of these climbs you go up to, you, you, it's so quiet. Mm-hmm. Right. And I can actually feel like whatever is going on in my head just shuts down and I'm connected. You know, mm-hmm. I can, I can pray in a way that doesn't involve words that are coming from from my mouth it's just it's it's a feeling of being connected to something that i was always connected to i just mm-hmm. had to i just had to quiet down from the city i just had to quiet down from my the relationships with other humans that are you know this constant thing it just is what it is it blows my mind to think when i go to some of these places this is just here all the time it's just quiet like this all the time Mm-hmm. And I get to come and partake in it for a little bit on my journey past and go up to the top of a mountain, have a quick look, take some pictures for my Instagram. I honestly love the idea that when this is all done, I can go do that without my camera, you know, and I do do a lot of that stuff. Just sit and look and, and, mm-hmm. and you know, be, a, be a, a part of something that's available all the time. You know, it, I really feel like there's some genuine portion of me that, that really feels like I, I was born 10,000 years too late. Like I should have been in the land when saber two tigers and all this stuff was around because when I actually quiet my mind down and feel what it feels like to be a part of mother earth's, you know, beautiful world, I, I, I am a diff I'm heal. I'm healing. Mm-hmm. I am actually connected in a way that pain is, you know, that I've logged and stored and kept and all this stuff. It, it has somewhere to go and mm-hmm. it's not, it's not a choice to let it go. I just quiet down and, and the world, I'm a part of the world. Right? Beautiful, bro. Beautiful. So, it's hard to explain, right? But yeah. you just got to experience it. And it's it like, makes me sad that a lot of people never get the opportunity. That's the God dope. Yeah, man. You can't explain the God dope. No. You know, seeing the animals, like talking to you. About the, I called you after seeing a couple eagles and stuff, mm-hmm. like being at the top of a mountain, looking down at the eagles. That's Dude, crazy. I saw a grizzly bear yesterday, man. Right. Beautiful grizzly. And also yesterday I saw an eagle. I bought this camera. It has like this telephoto zoom lens on it. I don't know how to work it, right? <laughs> but I'm doing my thing, trying to get these shots. I'll show you guys later. Yeah. But but anyway, I just want to thank you guys for what you're doing in the world, for changing your lives, for helping change other people's lives, and then joining on this initiative in, you know, brotherly love to serve our brothers and uh, and just doing what you do. So, you know, I want to thank you for coming. I want to thank you for wanting to be here and uh let's see how you do when you only climb 19 mountains (laughs) (laughs) whatever (laughs) i guess i just uh i wanted to thank you so much bill and uh lucy on the computer over there thank you so much everyone that comes together to make this uh podcast possible uh for everything you do um our own community and our personal recovery lives or here uh, in in the office, it's it's pretty amazing um, to now have um, be a tiny piece of that journey uh, mm-hmm. to share that with you. I just wanted to quickly touch on one one small comment. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just that many people um, right now are going through it with mental health, and uh, men are way overrepresented in this. There's over over seventy five percent of all suicides in Canada are men. Mm-hmm. That's about fifty suicides per week which is far too many. So if anyone listening right now in Calgary is going through it, if you're in crisis, if you're thinking about suicide, please call 211 and get connected with an agency that can help. Mm-hmm. If 
you're in Calgary, you can call the Calgary Distress Center. There's the National Suicide Hotline. There's two versions, one with professionals and one with peer support. There's so mm -hmm. many options to get connected. If you don't feel like talking to someone on the phone just yet, the Distress Center has an app. You can just download on your phone and you can talk to someone. If you're not in distress, but you want to chat, if you relate to our story, please send us an email, send us a call. We're personally happy to talk to you. Um, that's if you're not in crisis. Okay. If you're in crisis, get help now. Tell them where they can find you. They can find us uh, in one of two places. If you head over to courage2summit.com, that will take you um, to our fundraising page, and on there are all links to social media. You can also go to plantsforpurpose.ca and connect to the initiative through um, our initiatives tab. Roger. Yeah. Facebook, or Instagram. You TikTok. can get on my website, send me an email, send me a message. I can connect you with these boys. Um, if you go on YouTube or any of my LinkedIn, social media, Instagram, anything, I can, you can find me and I can put you in touch with these guys. Um, so, you know, I just want to thank you guys big time for coming out and, uh, We'll catch up when this is done. And then, Dale, I really do want you to climb 21 mountains. I appreciate that, and I believe you. <laughs> we'll, we'll take bets. We'll take bets. Yeah, yeah let's do a side yeah. side hustle here on, on bets now. I, uh, I too, want to just say thanks um, to you personally for help getting me connected spiritually and, and the way that I am now. I know that it was pivotal um, meeting you and, and taking direction from you and actually doing the directions. Um, and likewise with Ian, right? Like being, it, it's been inspiring to, to work beside you and be, you know, kind of doing our own things in ways that we're just going back and forth. It's, it's inspiring, right? Mm -hmm. So I just want to say thanks for, for, to both of you for being a part. This has been a pleasure. I love this. This okay. is very much important to me. So me thank too, you. Boys. Me yeah. too. Okay. Let's do a, thanks guys. Talk to you soon. Yeah,